Hey everyone. Hi. Uh, this is Rahul, and I'm uh, one of the front end developer in Anstack, and I have uh, Prithvi with me here. Hi everyone. I'm Prithvi. I work as a front end developer at Anstack, and let's get started with today's webinar. So, Rahul, tell us why we are here and what this Astro thing is, and what it is. Yeah, so uh, we are uh, discussing about what Astro is and uh, how to get started with Astro. This is something which uh, I was very excited when it got launched and uh, me and Prithu were discussing, uh, hey, this is something new to which, uh, which is uh, similar to Gatsby, but uh, it, it has a lot more uh, things which is going on. So uh, we wanted to uh, discover what exactly Astro is and here we are. So Prithvi, uh, can you walk us through what exactly Astro is and how it gets started? Yeah, sure, Rahul. So to get started with how Astro works and what it does, let's move on to the next slide. Yeah. So Astro is an all-in-one web framework. It means it does everything that you want to set up a normal web application to a robust one. It's for building fast content focused website. It does this using an interesting thing called as the islands architecture. And it's a meta meta framework. So now we'll tell us what a meta framework is before we start getting into the meta meta universe sort of things. So, uh, yeah, so the meta framework, um, let's, there are a lot of uh, framework which is already there here, right? When, when React got launched, uh, React was very uh, vanilla -ish. So everything uh, uh, started from routing and from uh, server-side rendering or stuff like that we have to do uh, by ourselves. And then something like Gatsby came, which is like full SSG and people who were working with portfolio and blogs, they were very excited about it. Uh, but uh, Gatsby was built on top of React. And then came Next.js, which is again on top of React and then came Remix and maybe uh, going ahead there will be a lot of frameworks. So frameworks which are like uh, frameworks which is built on top of libraries or frameworks are mostly called as meta frameworks here. Oh wow, that's that's really interesting. The JavaScript world is growing day by day. Yeah, yeah. So it's something that sits on top of a meta framework also. Uh, how how we say this is. It allows us to use any sort of client framework that we want, like React, Use, Weld, Lit, or anything that you can think of. Yeah, and also tell us what are the, like Astro sounds something complex, right? Are there any some concepts that are fairly complex that we don't know or we have to get ourselves refreshed with? Yeah, so, uh... Some of the concepts which we should get familiar with uh, before going ahead, how Astro works or how to get started with Astro, uh, there are like fairly three simple things, right? So uh, if you see any framework, so which are uh, bound to work with either CSR, uh, SSR, or SSG. So CSR is nothing but client-side rendering, SSR is nothing but server-side rendering, and SSG is nothing but static site generation. So I got a really good uh, example of uh, these three things, uh, which is shown here. So to give you a very uh, small uh, definitions of what these three things are, is CSR is nothing but everything is everything happens in the client side, right? And SSG is like you pre-render the static content. Uh, in your build time and um, with or without client side dynamic elements doesn't matter but everything happens in the build time and you then uh, throw it to the uh, browser and when it comes to ssr uh, it's like you uh, generate html dynamically with the request of the server and then it gets rehydrate on the client side so if you see here so this is a really good example where uh, the cooked noodles and cooked noodles and cooked noodles right everything is same here so which in this uh, ssg which is happens in the uh, build side 
but when it comes to client side rendering um, it is you get the ingredients and you take the send the ingredients so inter- through internet and in the browser all those uh, recipes cooked right so that is where csr is and when it comes to ssr uh, so you say that okay we need to cook some food and you say that we need to cook this food and you get that particular part which is dynamically rendering the html and then going to the browser right so uh, we we talk about ssr css and ssg here but uh, what what exactly happens uh, when when things are getting inside the browser what what do you what do we call we call it as hydrations right so uh, prithvi can can we can we know about what what exactly hydrations and rehydrations are yeah sure so rahul just gave you a gist of how things work behind the scenes what is happening in front of you is hydration or rehydration what happens is when you get the noodles as i have said or you get the ingredients they get cooked on the browser this can be shown to you as a loading screen or as a skeleton loader that we see nowadays right so that's what hydration or rehydration means hydration basically means that the browser is doing some processing it's trying to render all the interactive elements it's trying to see is if everything is in order before showing it to you or while showing it to you basically uh, the dictionary meaning is right there there's only there's also one more uh, thing that uh, we have here that is called as islands architecture now can you please uh, tell us what exactly this islands architecture is yeah yeah so uh... islands islands architecture was uh, as as far as i know uh, i think uh, kathy silver miller uh, was the first person who kind of coined what islands ar- architecture or component islands which we say so uh, which is referred to uh, like a, like a island kind of a structure so if i go to the next slide so uh, i'm sorry yeah here it is so if you if you see this um As, as you can see in the diagram so the independent components of uh, uh, independent components are uh, rendered uh, isolately without interacting with each other and uh, they are uh, res- the, the responsibility of hydration of each components are by their own right so some components are static and some components are dynamic and uh, static component does not need any hydration because as i said it is kind of uh, happened in the build time and you, we just have to render it in the browser but dynamic components need some hydration because you are fetching that i need this particular components and this has to be rendered but in islands architecture everything happens isolately and uh, that does not depend on each component uh, this this particular uh, process actually uh, achieved Uh, in in islands architecture or in, in astro uh, with a technique called partial hydration so if if i go to the next slide uh, if you can see this this is what how these things are divided right so in in, in the first uh, diagram we have ssr in the second we have progressive hydration and second is the islands architecture so in in ssr which is server side rendering uh we render all the components together and hydrate it like we request that we need all these components and we hydrate and we render in the browser uh when it comes to progressive hydration uh we render all the components but we hydrate depending on the key like what is the priority what should be hydrated first and what should be hydrated next uh and when it comes to islands architecture uh so as i said in the above diagram so if if you see this uh, header app and uh, uh filter app and other stuffs are something like which is kind of very uh static uh, and things which are like carousel and uh, uh other stuff which are kind of uh, dynamically you want to render and that will uh, render depending on what you ask for so one of the interesting uh, stuff which which i found out in astro is uh, uh yeah we know that uh, things and uh, things like components which uh, render depending on uh, the priority but uh, we as a user or a developer can actually control what to render and what not to so uh, they call it as uh, directive templates if i'm not wrong uh, and it has called uh, client directives uh, in astro and you can say that uh, this client has to be visible and this client has to be uh, idle 
So yeah, so that's kind of a mostly about how Astro works and what are the, these jargons. Uh, but uh, this this is all theoretical, right? So uh, can can we see some kind of a, a demo or uh, some some examples that uses Astro and how that works? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. So yeah, now that you've heard what it's doing, let's see how and let's see it in front of our eyes so that we know what's happening. So that's me, by the way. Yeah. So let me show you. So I have this uh, simple repo. You can see the link at uh, link of this in the description. So I have uh, two apps mainly, which is Blog App Astro and Blog App React. Uh, both are same uh, apps which do the same thing. I'll just show you the React code so that uh, since you are familiar with the React things. So it has the app.tsx. What I'm doing is use effect. Uh, so that I fetch the data from the API on load and then render it through a map. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The good thing about Astro is usually new frameworks do not have that great of a DX. But the good thing about Astro is you're using React itself here. So let me just show you how the Astro code looks like. So there's index.astro, which is uh, the page, the routing of the app. And here we have a React app component, which is nothing but the same code that I'm using here, apart from the use effect. So if you can see this, is the whole thing same? Is the only different thing is the use effect is not there. Okay. Let's see an example in the link. I'll open both of these links so that you can see what's happening in front of you. So this is a pretty nice and Common use case that you have, fetch things from the API, render it as a list. Okay, this is Astro, this is React. Since the blogs are random, you'll see some differences. Okay, uh, let me just show you the network tab. Here, and let me open it here. So let's talk about React and what's happening here first. When I hit reload here, uh, I'll just empty the cache and reload this so that you get to see what's happening exactly. Yeah, we'll ignore React DevTools since it's my browser. Uh, so here we fetch a document first. As you can see, it's nothing but a simple div with an ID root. What exactly happens in this? Nothing. So what's happening here is, Everything that is determining the shape, the content, and everything of the app is contained into this index.js, which is called the main bundle. What it tells the browser is you have to download the bundle or else I'll not work. And this has a huge React code, right? It basically tells what it has to do next. Download the CSS, where to add the styles, how the DOM should be, and you get in the end uh, something like this rendered in your uh, browser. So as you can see, uh, there's an API call also here, and also the fab icon being fetched, which is not that important. So this is a lot of steps that's being done after the server has given you the files. Try to scale it up and think of your application being a million lines long or something like that. This incrementally increases your loading times and makes the website slow, right? Now let's see how Astro is doing this thing. I'll clear the cache here and load it. As you can see, there are fewer files. Apart from the React backend, uh, React DevTools, there's the React bundle that is missing and the extra JS that you can see. So let's see how it looks. Oh, wow. So the server has already kept the content here for us to fetch, which means the API call has happened already. You might notice the API call is missing from here. Whereas if you reload this, the API call happens always. Now, if you see the preview, you can see that HTML is being rendered here, which, uh, which means that all, most of your things are already uh, rendered and available for you to use. But there's one caveat here. Like here, every time the call is going through, so you're getting new responses, which means your content is up to date. Here, the content is not up to date. The content will only be up to date if you rebuild the application, which might not fit your business needs. 
well that seems like a downfall of astro right but it's not astro provides something like rahul said the island architecture so i'll just show you how island architecture works so this is the plain old thing that we had i'll just reload and show you it's doing the same thing like island page it's fetching the styles and the fabric but the interesting thing here is i'll just show you the html response you see there is a csr heading here and refresh blog in the reloader here but that just here let me open the network tab and let you see what's happening once i scroll down you see that react is getting downloaded here and this is fetching new blocks even though at build time at load time this thing is not getting fetched it is fetching whenever you scroll into it so through the cl client directive of visible i have told astro to fetch the js whenever this component is in view and it's totally interactive is just as you would write your react apps is developed the same no differences it even has the use effect i can even show show it to you here i'll show it in the components react app and this react csr this is the exact copy of the thing that we had with the use effect okay now this thing is important when you do page speed insights so i'll just show you what's happening over here this is with the react okay uh, and i'll show you the react blogs insights yeah as you can see the the difference might not be that much because it's a very simplistic app but the thing that that's important here is a tree map so here you can see there is 2.6 kb of js that's been used right now and all of it's being used this is just the intersection observer code here if you see the code is 98 but here the js that you are using is 246.7 kb out of which 120 is unused when you scale it up to a bigger application with a very complex use case you have a lot of things going on it, this is the main reason why your websites are slow and this is the magic of astro and this is how it does the things uh, as you can see in front of you but there's obviously not everything that's great with astro there are some places where astro may not be the ideal choice now can you please elaborate on that what are the good things about astro and where it might not be best for your business yes so uh, as as prithvi showed like how astro is different from the typical cra app uh, let's let's talk about some of the good things about astro right like let's refresh what are the things which has like it has multi framework support so if you can go to the astro document uh, if if you are familiar with react you can get started with astro easily if you're familiar with vue swelt or any other framework astro gives you all this support like you can start from the daisy so it supports all uh, multi frameworks of uh, uh, frameworks and uh, yeah it's 100% static html and minimal js so main main aim of astro is to uh, uh, ship less javascript to the browser right and uh, on demand components so one of the interesting part which uh, Uh, uh prithvi showed is uh it uses the client directives and you can control what component to render what component to be static and uh stuff like that uh using the client directive and uh yeah obviously uh it, it, most of the things happens in the client uh, server side uh it has a good support for seo and uh, it is built for content rich websites like as i said uh if if your website uh, or your use case is mostly on the content side of it maybe blogs or maybe uh, portfolio sites or something which is uh, content rich uh, it's really really uh, shines uh, you still can use astro with the uh, interactive uh, stuff but that part of the application becomes like a typical uh, uh, react or uh, typical uh, swelt applications right uh which some of things are from the client uh so yeah so there are a lot of good things but there there must be some uh, gotchas or some limitations which uh, astro has so prithvi can you can you elaborate like what what are the some of the limitations which uh, astro has 
Yeah, sure. So, as you saw, uh, Astro has uh, been focused towards the SSG and SSR aspects of your application, which means it's not ideal for highly interactive application. Consider your music player, your your music services that stream music to you. If you use there, there's a lot of interactivity going on. You want everything to be client side rendered, almost everything. Which means Astro will just sit there in the in the middle doing nothing of use to you, which is not a great use case to use as Astro in this case. Yeah, and as you make big websites that change a lot, like there has to be changes to your content by the day. It has to change rapidly. The stock should always be there for your uh, clients to see. Uh, you see with Astro, what happens is unless and until you build it or unless you, un until you think about a serious SSR uh, solution for it, there is no way to give your customers the uh, real-time data, basically. So, so let's say an e-commerce app where you need to be very particular about the stocks, the prices, the time of the day when the prices are reflective. It is not that ideal of a choice. And lastly, there is one more limitation is that if you focus on the SSG aspect of it, this is the same with all SSG apps basically, is as your page size increases, the number of pages that you're dealing with increase, it kind of slows down. Mm. Like if you go from a million pages to a billion pages, you're going to have that hundred full increase in some part of the build process. Yeah, so every and, time uh, you want to rebuild the application, you have to wait to fetch all the queries and construct that uh, application to the right form. And so that might have some cons in this. I think that is kind of okay if, if your focus is on uh, delivering the super fast application to the users. But yeah, that is, that's there, I guess. Uh, yeah. So uh, we, we got to know about strengths. We got to know about limitations. We also went through the demo, which showed us how uh, Astro uses the on-demand components and how it is different from the, uh, the CRA application and uh, uh, all that, right? So one thing which uh, I said in the earlier of the uh, uh, webinar that uh, we got excited when Astro came and we wanted to try it out. So uh, I, I want you to share that story, like how it started and w where are we and how, how are we using Astro? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the previous website was built in Gatsby, which was a great framework, but it also presented some problems to us, namely being a bit too complex with this GraphQL uh, and not very intuitive for de developer experience and non-technical contributions. So we wanted something that is very easy for developers to get into, get out of, won't require much of an onboarding effort, uh, will solve our existing problems that Gadio was solving, which was mainly like SEO because we like to put content as a company and we like to get it seen, right? And if the SEO is not great, it won't be seen by people. We want it to be good. Uh, we want the uh, blogs and webinars and everything that's associated with the content of the company to come to the customer. Uh, since it won't change that much, uh, making it up to date is not a priority, but it should happen. Uh, it should come to the customer easily. So what we did is we explored a lot of options. Astro was trending at the time. You can use everything. You can try everything. And we just tried it and we started loving it. It, it just worked in the ways that we wanted to. We used it with Strapi and rest is history. And we have this, uh, this in front of us. So the main features that Astro powers are, is uh, blogs and webinars. So these are all powered, given by Strapi to us. Just as, just as we click on any link, it's a markdown rendered and everything. All the routing, pagination, tag generation, and everything is handled by Astro's build, at Astro's build setup, which means go, the search engine crawlers have an easy time of crawling our web pages. And the second one is events. Events is also very similar. It, uh, it, it works in real time. It gives the webinar code. Everything is very functional, highly interactive. This is a 
<coughs> sorry for that uh yeah and this is where astro shines and astro has helped us a lot the dx has been great it was really easy to onboard developers and even in cases where the load of development increased we were easy we were able to easily onboard other developers who who didn't think that this was much of a chore to learn astro because it was easy and they were coding most of it in react itself yeah so i just yeah. want to share one one of the uh, story when when we were launching the uh, anstack uh, new site uh, we were we were highly focused on um, how uh, uh, how to be that reach that 100% mark in the lighthouse right uh, we were already and uh, we were about to uh, kind of launch it and we we got a requirement that we need to add uh, uh, like a stay up to date form or sign up form we call it right so if you go to anstack.com there is a there is a uh, stay tuned form and uh, we we wanted to add uh, uh, i am not a robot uh, tool there uh, from google and uh, when we when we added it the lighthouse score uh, went way down right it was like 98 ish and uh, i think we reached 60 or 70 if i'm not wrong right 60 and yeah 60s so we were very worried like what to do right like we reached here and why why this particular thing uh, was uh, like hitting us hard and uh, we we saw that like it was because of the library which we added and um, we were worried like what to do next and that is that is where astro came in picture right like that is like that odd us uh, literally uh because of the client directives we were able to load that particular part very late right we like uh, it uses intersection observer and uh, if uh, what was the client directive it was a delay if i'm not wrong um uh, i think it was visible late or delay uh, uh, please please check out visible, the uh, astro doc client visible. yeah client visible yeah so client visible so so that particular code kind of helped us to go again uh, up the ladder of the lighthouse and uh, it was super fast so it's still there you can go and check it out uh, that's that's mostly from our side uh, how astro and how it works and how to get started with it uh, so if if anyone has any questions or anything please tag us uh, uh, in twitter or uh, to the anstack Twitter handler, and we are happy to help you on that. So, yes, thanks everyone.